Missouri hits the road for the first time this season as they take on the Texas A&M Aggies. Coming off the bye week, M-I-Z feels like they got a lot to prove after what feels like they're being doubted nationally after two close contests against Boston College and Vanderbilt, helping us break down all things Mizzou and the game this Saturday against the Aggies. Colin Anthony of the Mazodcast joins the show once again. Colin, appreciate you taking the time, and it's a pleasure to have you on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good to be here. It's funny, Colin, when I said the national disrespect line, I saw you smile. That That's something you guys are used to, right? I mean, this, this yeah, we is live no, in that world. This is nothing new, right? The top 10 Tigers are being disrespected, if you will. Uh, we'll get in that game in a second, Colin, but I first want to lock in on these first four games. Uh, Mizzou sitting, obviously, at 4-0, 1-0 in the conference, but I think it's more so how the Tigers have gotten there, right? You blow out Murray State, blow out Buffalo, ho-hum. You know, the Boston College game was – was interesting. Thomas Castellanos at quarterback gave him IZ some fits. And then the Vanderbilt game, nobody saw going to double overtime. Still, though, you sit undefeated. You go in the bye week. You clean some things up. What have you been your biggest takeaways from Mizzou to this point? Obviously, a team that came into the season with very, very high expectations and, uh, uh, you know, excitement around the program like we haven't seen in quite some time. Well, I think uh, everybody right now has some concerns with the offense. Uh, we've been a little bit stagnant. Uh, you know, Brady Cook, I, I don't want to call it regression, but, you know, early on Brady Cook was not every Mizzou fan's uh, pick for quarterback. And then last year he had a sort of a transcendent year and then every, and everybody got on the train. Well, he has come out of the gates uh, a little shaky. He's been, you know, sailing some passes, throwing some hospital balls, unfortunately. And uh Everybody's like, hey, is this the guy uh, from the two years ago? And I, I'm just not overly concerned yet. Um, Mizzou kind of had this recipe last year. I mean, we did not start a house of fire. We had some close games very early on. Everybody was very nervous. Um, you know, it was after the LSU loss that things really started to gel. You know, Cody Schrader became the Cody Schrader that everybody knew at the end of the season. Brady Cook started to really look like a confident quarterback. So, you know, there's obviously some trepidation in Mizzou world just because the the offense has not been uh, maybe what everyone expected right away. But it, it also seems to be following the same recipe as last year. Nate Noel had 199 yards in his last game. They seem to be establishing him as like maybe the bell cow, as they did with Schrader, as they did with Beatty before him. And so I think we just got to give it some time to this team to develop. we got two new guys on the left-hand side of the offensive line. You know, that always takes time to gel. Um but they got two really good backs in in Carroll and Noel. And so I think the running game's in a good place. The, the blocking for the running game's in a good place. You know, we just got to get Brady to get a little sharper. And I think you're going to see a Mizzou football team that looked pretty similar to last year. Colin, I want to go to the defensive side of the football because I feel like with Corey Batoon taking over, there was so much change from last year, right? Blake Baker goes to LSU. You have multiple guys into the NFL draft or go to the draft, if you will. Uh, what's been your biggest takeaways from the defensive side? Because, again, I, I know that's where the majority of the questions lie. We've, we felt pretty good about the offense coming in, but defense was going to be the thing that it felt like determined the ceiling for this Mizzou team. But what's been your takeaways from that side of the ball? Yeah, I think, you know, for all the concern with the offense and, and some trepidation about Brady, uh, Cook, the, the defense has been what worried me a little bit, um, but they seem to have reloaded in talent. Um, pride on the outside uh, has sort of – hit the ground running at cornerback. Um, you know, Norwood was here last year, and short of two guys who are NFL caliber cornerbacks, he would have been starting last year. Uh, the real trouble we've had in the bat and the defensive or the with the D-backs has been um, Brooks or Burks Jr. He's a, a transfer safety. He's been susceptible like play action. He's a he's a tackle first sort of safety. And you know Four, I think, of the Mizzou's touchdowns given up this year have been on blown coverages. And a lot of that's just been back end. Maybe, you know, Mizzou can be a little susceptible to the uh, to the play action. Um, what, what we've really been concerned with is just like the overall sort of conservative nature of the defense. They've been rushing four down linemen. They haven't been bringing a lot of blitzes, sort of flooding coverage. Uh, you know, I joked on our show that they have treated these last two quarterbacks because they have legs like they were Lamar Jackson and they're just flooding and like, and spies. And I'm like, these are opponents where we should be sort of pinning our ears back and trying to win by, you know, three touchdowns. Because ultimately, you know, when you're trying to get a playoff spot, there's going to be a lot of resume comparison. And, you know, when you're, you know, scraping by Boston College and scraping by Vanderbilt, 
you know, that's certainly not helping your case. And so, you know, when you got a game against A and M, it makes it just it just leaves so little room for error. And I would really like to see them get more aggressive. But again, just like last year, I mean, the I think the Mizzou defense really turned after the LSU. Jaden Daniels kind of lit us up, and we had played a lot of soft zones and didn't bring a lot of heat. And we ended up losing that game, a game that was very winnable. And after that, they sort of set the dogs loose. Now, this is a different defensive coordinator, but I'm hoping – you know, a little self-scouting in the in the bye week, we'll see Mizzou sort of uh, be a little more aggressive on defense. They've got great linebackers, very athletic. Um, uh, flag has been a, a revelation on the defensive line. You know, they lost Darius Robinson and that shows, but uh, McKellen out of Florida who transferred in has really been able to get pressure up the middle. Um, you know, Johnny Walker Jr. is a good DN, but the problem is, is those guys are just having to try to do it all by themselves because we just, we're just not bringing a lot of heat and, uh, just watching our defensive line get stood up way too much when you're just brushing forward down linemen and really not throwing anything at them exotic, just trying to keep everything in front. It just seemed a little conservative. And I feel like if Mizzou's the team we think that they are, you know, a top 10 team in the country, they need to be able to, you know, frankly, grow a pair and try to go after some of these teams. Colin, I want to go back to Brady Cook quickly because you look at his numbers. I mean, it's it's not like he's been terrible. He's not turning the football over. But like you mentioned, it feels like he hasn't taken the step forward that I think many were hoping for and expecting. Is it, I mean, is it as simple as that? Is it the, you know, I, I know he's missed some deep shots. I don't know if the offense has got the explosiveness that people probably feel like it should have with guys like Luther Burden and Theo Weiss and Mookie Cooper and the list goes on and on of those big time weapons on the outside. Like, ha- has that been the thing? If there's one thing you can pinpoint that you'd like to see Brady Cook do a better job at, is it just, is it more accuracy down the field? Is it something else? Because, again, you look at the numbers. It's not like they're bad, but there's definitely – it's leaving some things to be desired for sure. Well, and he's been great on a pretty steep curve because of what the season he had last year. Mm. But And I think that people are discounting that, you know, when you play Buffalo early, the Vanderbilts, the Boston – all these teams, were, they were playing a lot of uh, two-deep zone. They're trying to keep Luther Burden from taking the top off. And um, I don't know as if we get in the conference play if you're going to see as much of that. Uh, those teams were you know, sort of inferior opponents and they're really concerned about the talent at wide receiver. But Brady Cook's really just his I, – I don't worry too much about the deep ball just because that was exactly what defenses were trying to take away. The stuff that really concerns us is the, you know, the underneath stuff, the little outs to their outside, you know, short third down passes that he has just not been accurate on. And I, I've said it on our show, I think the fan base, I think the players, I think the coaches, everybody is just a little tight. Uh, you know, we are for the first time in our history uh, staring down the barrel of a playoff spot if we don't, you know, trip over our feet. So I think everybody's just been a little tight and I, Brady included, I think. And plus, he's been getting heat. I think if there's there's an area that really concerns me or not really concerns me, but is is an area for concern is the offensive line. You know, he has been under some duress uh, and that doesn't help when you're trying to find your accuracy and sort of trying to find your calm in a season that obviously has a lot, a lot of playoff implications. So, Colin, let's zero in on this game on Saturday. Mizzou traveling to Kyle Field to take on the Aggies. I, I want to first ask you this, Colin. I'm, I'm not sure if you're a big gambling guy or pay much attention to the spreads or the totals. Were you surprised when you saw Mizzou as an underdog to Texas a and Because admittedly, I was. I was surprised when that line opened up and the Tigers were a a field goal or so underdog. And it it just kind of plays into what we were just talking about, right? Like Mizzou is the king of the doubted. Um, were you surprised, though, to see that number come out from Vegas? Maybe a little. I mean, we have not been impressing anybody in these wins. Now, we have been winning, but like I said, we have not been impressing anybody. And what Mizzou has sort of been shaky on offensive line is sort of what A&M does well. Their defensive line, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting the guy's name, uh, but they've got two guys – at a and who are going to probably play on Sundays. Um, and for a team that struggles with offensive line, I think Vegas is looking at this and go, hey, this is a bad matchup for Missouri, at least in the trenches. Um, and without Missouri really looking explosive on offense, I feel like it's, you know, it's it was surprising. I figured Mizzou would actually be a, a favorite. Um, but, they you know, and Kyle feels a loud place. Maybe they're just, you know, they're giving them a they're giving them a bump for the, the home game. But a little bit, a little bit surprised. I, I think you know, Mizzou's being underestimated. I, they're, they're still full of athletes. As many athletes, uh, premium athletes as Mizzou's had in maybe ever. Uh, and they can really stand up with most any team in the country. 
you know, saving Alabama, maybe Texas and Georgia and stuff. But anybody else, Mizzou plays their A game. They're going to give anybody all they want. So, Colin, you mentioned some of the things that stand out to you about Texas A&M. What have you seen from the Aggies? Obviously, they sit right now. They lose that season opener to Notre Dame. Uh, they've bounced back in a big way, won four straight games, two of those being conference games, one in the swamp against Florida and one against Arkansas. So, 2-0 and in conference play. Take it for what it's worth, obviously. But they do have a mobile quarterback in Marcel Reed. Eli Drinkwitz, I thought it was – I appreciated his uh, his honesty when he came out and said, we know who's playing quarterback for them. Like We're not going to try to – it's going to be yeah. the guy they've been winning games with lately. I, I, I appreciated his, uh, his bluntness, if you will, when talking about the game plan. But uh, what stands out to you about A&M, things that maybe concern you about the matchup, and maybe some things that – you know, you feel like Mizzou has the upper hand, can take advantage of, and, and maybe exploit on Saturday. Well, as mentioned, I think the, you know, my concern really comes with defensive line. Can we hold up against Brady? We we got the SMU transfer, uh, Bryant, uh, to play left tackle. And he's a big guy, and if he gets his Mets on you, you know, he's a mauler. But he has a little trouble with the speed around the corner, which scares me a little bit. Um, I think – Despite them having a good pass rush, I do think Mizzou can run against A&M. Um, Mizzou's has, for as faulty as they've been sort of pass blocking, they have been very good at run blocking for two seasons now. And with Nate Noel and uh, Carroll, they've got sort of a two-headed monster. Um, and I think that's what Mizzou needs to do against A&M is establish the run. They, they, I feel like Mizzou to this point has been passing and then sort of running off of that. It, it needs to reverse. You know, Grady Cook is not a guy you want to throw 40, 40 times a game. Um, I think you need to establish that running game and let it open up the play action, let it open up some some passing lanes, maybe get some of those safety starts sneaking up. Um, so I think we'll be able to run against AM. Uh, you know, and there's Luther Burden. If if Brady can be accurate, uh, you know, Luther's one of those guys on a field full of five star athletes and four star athletes who still looks special. And across from him is Theo Weiss, who if he were on any other roster, he would basically be the number one wide receiver. So uh, they've got a sort of an embarrassment of riches at wide receiver. If the line can hold up the pass blocking, you know, I think we can throw just about against anybody. And I know we're going to be able to run. So, um, I mean, I shouldn't say I know, but, you know, it looks as though we can run. So, you know, I think offensively we look good as long as the offensive line holds up. Defensively, I think uh, it'll depend on, on strategy. Again, another mobile quarterback is Drinkowitz again going to just drop back or Batoon more accurately and try to, you know, flood coverage and try to keep everything in front, maybe spy the quarterback. I don't know. I would really like to see them to bring some heat. Johnny Walker Jr., if you can get him in one-on-ones, can win those. And um, McK- McKellen in the middle is is a force to be reckoned with. If you start throwing a blitzer like flag, you know, into the backfield, I think there's a lot that can be gained there. Um, they also got some good corners and safety. So, I mean, you could bring some heat from from even deeper back. And I think that's what Mizzou needs to do. They need to try to establish this defense a little more aggressively and try to force some turnovers. Because when you're on the road, I think that can be the difference between winning and losing. Certainly, turnover margin. Colin going to go a long way in this football game. Uh, Colin, speak to the importance of this one from the standpoint of talking to Missouri folks before the season. You know, I heard people say as far as that Mizzou's got a three-game season, right? And, and this was one of them, right? The A&M game the Bama game, and the Oklahoma game were the really big ones. Now, as we've seen, you know, in SEC play this year, you take no game for granted. So I I don't think that's fair to say at this point. But this one feels, you know, you just mentioned it. it, it, This one feels really, really important for a team that came into this season, college football playoff or bust. I mean, this is Missouri's best chance to make a playoff ever in its history. This one is – there's no way to get around or dance around the fact this one is massively important for those chances. Absolutely. I mean, Mizzou's, you know, Mizzou's a team that they're going to be looking to kick out. I mean, that's just, somebody's got to be 13th in the country at the end of the year. <laughs> and why not Mizzou? I mean, I feel like that's what the media is going to want. And so we just can't, we just don't have any room for error. And losing the A&M, because I mean, everybody saw what Alabama did against Georgia. You know, Alabama looks like every Alabama team that won the national championship before it. Uh, they look really good. And for to think that Mizzou's going to go in there and win that football game, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's unlikely. And so you lose a, a, to A&M, and then you, you know, take your lumps at, uh, at Tuscaloosa, suddenly you're having to compare resumes. And honestly, Mizzou's resume is not going to look great just because of strength of schedule. Um, so we need to win these games. This is an important one. If you, if you truly – if you don't win this game, you're playing for your life every week, and that's a bad place to be. Um, 
So it's it's as important as any game on their schedule they're going to see. And truthfully, you know, this is a better team than I feel like Auburn is. Auburn's looked like trash on it, frankly. And I feel like uh, the trains come a little off the tracks with Hugh Freeze there. You know, you win those couple games and suddenly you're 7-0, and you're going to Alabama – and really just be competitive. Just be competitive. Don't get beat 60 to 10. And, you know, Alabama's a team that if you if you won, if you they won by th- uh, a field goal at the end of the game, you might even move up in the rankings. And so, like, you need – but you got to win these games because there's just no room for error. When you start talking about comparing uh, resumes with two losses, Mizzou's going to have a hard time doing that. You know, they're be- who's going to be their best win mm-hmm. if they don't uh, win this one? You know, Oklahoma doesn't look like world beaters. Boston College, you're you going to hang that on your wall. So, you know, you got to win these games uh, like A&M because people respect A&M. Now, a and not a, you know, like top 10 team, but, you know, they're, this is going to be important at resume time. And I don't know where that, I don't know if we'll get a second loss, you know, but if we do, it doesn't need to be to A&M. And so, um Listen, everybody knows the room for error for Mizzou is really small. And so uh, the most important game we've played, and hopefully a game where sort of like we did against uh, the Vols last year, sort of that coming out party. We turned up the heat on defense. We established Cody Schrader, and then we never looked back. And that's really the recipe I'm hoping for on Saturday. Colin, you mentioned it, but I want to go back to it. When you look at this game, key or keys to victory for Missouri if they're going to go into College Station and get that win? Turnovers. I think we need turnovers and we need extra possessions. Um, I think they need to establish the running game. I think as much as anything last year, you know, that's what made Mizzou Mizzou was Cody Schrader in this running game. And Nate Noel looks great. The line looks good. Um, let's get back to what what works. And I and including on the defense with pressure. I think running the football and bringing pressure are going to be keys to this game. And, and a lot of that is going to come down to coaching. I said it in our our latest episode. I mean, we have athletes. We have the players. At this point, it's just a a matter of are the coaches going to put them in a position to succeed. Colin Anthony of the Mazad cast. Those guys do a fantastic job talking all things Missouri Tigers. Colin, let folks know where they can check out your work and check out the show. Well, the Mazad cast is obviously on iTunes and Spotify and all that. We're on Twitter. We're on threads. Um, you can email us at uh, mazadcast at gmail.com. Uh, please uh, give us a listen. Uh, I think you'll find it's, a little bit entertaining as compared to some of your other <laughs> SEC podcasts. Um, but, yeah, that's where you can find us. And any angry Aggies? Don't you guys have the call-in line, I think, or something like oh, that? Oh, yeah. Or, or got, the, what, it, what is, the, what is the, the, the you guys pick on the opponents? What is that again? I, I'm trying to think what the segment well, is. we do Kansas news. Uh, Kansas, our traditional okay. our traditional rival. And every, <laughs> every week we like to remind everyone what a – reprehensible trash state that is <laughs> and how everyone there is probably a sex offender i can't verify that but it's probable i would say probable oh my goodness on that note too i'm actually headed this week to the great state of arkansas so you can uh wish me well as i head to the ozarks for the first time ever all right <laughs> colin i appreciate you taking the time man we'll definitely do this again soon for sure thanks so yeah much. we'll see you man thanks for having us